These trail bikes, man. Get yourself some down country action. Wasting the best years of my life. It all adds up. Hey, dog. Hello and welcome to the Pink Bike Efficiency Test. We've got some of the latest and greatest down country and trail bikes, and to the side of me, we've got a long gravel road. Now I've had my oats this morning, not that kind of oats, get your mind out of the gutter. So let's put a power meter on these bikes, turn my muscles into what, and my face into a tomato. So what's our plan for today? Well, you know the score by now. We're gonna ride the same section of gravel road on these different bikes. I'm gonna take a power meter from bike to bike. This way, at the same power output, we'll be able to see how efficient these bikes are on the climbs by the difference in their times. A quicker time and the more efficient the bike is. Now, some important caveats here. I'm gonna ride at the same power over the entire stretch of the course. Each bike, respective of its category, has the same tires on set to the same pressure to keep things nice and even. The beauty of this rather simple test is it will highlight the differences between the bikes in the boldest possible terms. Then you can take those results and make of them what you will. Now here we've got a relatively short climb. So of course, if the climb was longer, you can expect the differences between the bikes in terms of time to be greater. Now, something important to note here. As you might notice, this isn't NASA. There are no clipboards. And to be honest, I've barely got the wherewithal to get through my times tables. But hopefully this can help you make an informed decision about which is the most efficient bike. But perhaps it's worth taking our results with a small grain of salt. So that's enough jibber jabber from me. There's a fire road with my name on it. So let's get into it. The Santa Cruz Blur is one of the lightest bikes on test. So will it be making my life a bit easier? Well, no, because that's not how watts work, but I should get there a bit quicker, hopefully at least. Two minutes, 41 seconds. This Santa Cruz has actually got quite a nice feeling when you climb, you're not, it feels like it tracks really well, it's very smooth. Whether that translates to a good time, we'll have to compare them all later. But all in all, that felt pretty good. Oh. 243, which for the most trail bikey of the downcountry bikes doesn't seem too bad at all. Now we have the Canyon Lux with its World Cup pedigree. Now this bike does have a remote lockout, which I'm not going to use primarily to keep it fair, but secondly, I'm not into that sort of gubbins. So off we go. Two forty-two again. So uh, see, you know, that's quite a common, a common time. Bikes of the XC lineage against that Niner doesn't seem to be counting for much. A pretty light bike, this one. You could even say that in climbing, it should be in its element. I'll let myself out. Two thirty-eight. So actually, a little bit quicker. It's a pretty light bike. Maybe that helps. I guess it does. That's what they say. Light bikes go uphill fast, fast. Off we go. It's only gone and done it. Two thirty-seven. I was thinking it had to beat the Rocky. And you know, with our amateur mathematics and dramatics, 
Heaven by Jove, I think it has. Oh, good trek. People, they're gonna be pleased as punch. With all of these bikes, we've been running them at the correct spring rate for my weight, as well as not using any cheat switches and leaving the bikes in their fully open settings. However, with this bike and its electronic suspension, we're gonna do two runs, one in climb mode and one in fully open mode. So not only find how it compares against the rest, but how it compares against itself. So, off we go. Two forty-three, but that's with the live valve in its climb position. Now, I, I'm not going to laugh if it opens faster, and I think it'd be very immature if you laughed. So, don't, because it might not. It, it won't be. It can't be. Two minutes, 45. So your bike may well look like Neo as he breaks out the matrix, but at least it's that little bit quicker. Now it's time for the ghost. On the climbs, will this be a spectacular success or a scary proposition? Well, let's see. <laughs> This is my first trail bike after the down country bikes. That's about 40 seconds slower than some of them. This is, this is quite a peculiar bike. I've, I've been on down country duty. These trail bikes are new to me. I didn't have had a double booking with a Bransy Castle or something, eh? I said some pretty unfair things that transpired about the ghost and it's brother in arms and the motley crew very similar performance actually I think maybe a second in it not much and compared to these bikes with their core suspension be it this one because it's steel or these slightly unconventional looks of the ghost when it actually comes down to it in terms of efficiency at least they are very similar to the rest so now it's the turn of the absolutely gorgeous score, but does it bring anything other than good looks to the party? Or how about efficiency? Oh. Okay, I take every mean thing I said about that ghost back, because this is pretty slow too. But it looks like it's gonna be so light just so much of it. There's probably about three kilos of dirt under that shock. My, I'm so disappointed because it looks so good. <laughs> so for all the, um, the stick I was given the ghost, it's not actually that much though. <laughs> this is quite a sort of portly bike. It's not as light as its elegant looks would, would suggest. And um, yeah, I think the weight was holding it back a fair bit there. So I know what you're probably all thinking by now, where is Mike Levy? Well, he told me that today he just got back to back to back meetings. He couldn't come out in the rain to do the efficiency test. Hence I'm here. That's besides the point because this is the raw jib and let's see how it goes. Same time as all the others, bloody slow. These trail bikes, man. Get yourself some down country action. This 
son surprised that. This felt really fast, but it just wasn't. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really surprising. This definitely felt the most sprightly, but hey, according to our, um, our fun, fun level of experimentation, it's, uh, it's not, not the fastest in the climbs, which is really weird. So after a day of running up and down the same road, I can really see why gravel biking is taking off because I mean, I'd do that on my weekend. That was fantastic. But for the trail bikes, the timings, well, there was quite an even spread. So maybe this is where that grain of salt comes in to season to your own tastes. The cooked to a turn raw and the specialized both did it in three minutes and 10 seconds. Although, like I said, coming behind them, it's all pretty even. And which was to be the most down country bike of them all? Well, it was the Trek with a time of two minutes, 37 seconds, although the Rocky was nipping at its heels at 2.38. But that is it, it's a wrap for today. That was our Bad Facts Fury Road as we paced up and down that gravel stretch. Thank you very much for watching. Get in the comments to let us know what you thought was gonna be the most efficient and whether you in fact were right. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.